we're going, I'm going to read the uh, glories of Sri Purushottama month by Srila Satchitananda Bhakti Vinod Thakura. Two divisions of Shastra, Smarta and Paramartha. So, Bhakti Vinod Thakura writes, The Vedic Arya Shastras are divided into two sections, Smarta, literature based on Smriti, and Paramartha, transcendental literature based on Shruti. Those who are eligible, Adhikari, for the Smarta section do not have any natural inclination or taste for the Paramartha Shastras. The thoughts, principles, activities, and life goal of every human is constituted according to his respective ruchi, inclination. Generally, Smartas accept those scriptures which are in accordance with their respective ruchi, or taste, or inclination. Having greater adhikara for Smarta Shastra, they do not demonstrate much regard for Paramartika Shastra. Providence is the agent behind the creation of these two divisions. Therefore, undoubtedly, the maintainer of the world must have a hidden purpose in having made such an arrangement. As far as I understand, the purpose is that the jivas sequentially make progress in their level of consciousness by remaining steadfast in their respective adhikara. By deviating from one's adhikara, one falls down. According to one's activities, a person attains two types of adhikara, karma adhikara and bhakti adhikara. Adhikara means eligibility. As long as one maintains his karma adhikara, he derives benefit from the path shown by the smarta section. When he enters bhakti adhikara by transgressing, transgressing the karma adhikara, then he develops a natural ruchi or inclination for the paramartika or transcendental path. Therefore, Providence has made these two divisions of Shastra, Smarta and Paramartha. The rules and regulations of Smarta Shastra are committed to karma. The Smarta Shastra has made various types of rules and regulations in order to help one attain nista, steadfastness, in karma adhikara. In many instances, it even demonstrates indifference toward Paramartha Shastra to make people attain specific nista in, or, or faith in such rules and regulations. In reality, although Shastra is one, it manifests in two ways for the people. If the jiva gives up adhikara nista, he can never attain auspiciousness. <laughs> for this reason, the Shastras have been divided to two, Smarta and Paramartha. Adimas, extra month, also called the Mala Masa, impure month, is devoid of all auspicious activities. By dividing the whole year in 12 parts, the Smarta Shastras have ascertained the auspicious or religious activities for these 12 months. All the karma, religious activities, that are part of the Varnashrama system, when allotted to the 12 months, leave the extra months, Adimas, devoid of any such activity. There is no religious performance in Adimasa. In order to keep lunar months and solar months in tally, one month has to be excluded every 32 months. The name of that month is Adimasa, or extra months. Smartas have discarded this extra month, considering it abominable. They give it names such as Malamas, Masa, Impure Month, Choramasa, Thieving Month, and so on. It is stated in the Sri Surya Siddhanta that in one Maha Yuga, there are 1,593,336 extra months and 51,840,000 solar months. Therefore, there is one extra month for every 32 months, 16 days and 4 hours of the solar calendar. From the perspective of Paramartha, Paramartha Shastra, Adimas is superior and advantageous for Hari Bhajara. So there's a major difference then between the Smartas and 
the devotees. On the other hand, the most worshipable Paramartha Shastra acclaims Adhimasa as the most outstanding month for transcendental activities. Since life in this world is temporary, it is not proper to spend any part of one's life meaninglessly. It is imperative for the jiva to remain continuously engaged in Hari Bhajana at every moment. Thus, the Adi Masa, which comes every third year, may also become useful for Hari Bhajana. This is indeed the deep meaning of Paramartha Shastras. Even though karmas perceive this month to be devoid of all auspicious activities, for the deliverance of all the jivas, Paramartha Shastra, on the other hand, has ascertained that period as the most conducive for Hari Bhajana. Paramartha Shastra says he himself, Hey Jiva, during this Adhimasa, why should you remain lazy in Hari Bhajana? Srimad Golokanata himself has ascertained that this month is the best of all. It is superior even to the greatly pious months of Kartika, Maga, and Vaisaka. In this month, you should perform archana of Shishi Radha Krishna with special rules or moods for bhajana. You will thereby attain all types of perfections. The history and glories of Adi Masa and how it received the name Purushottama. The glories of Adi Masa are mentioned in the 31st chapter of the Naradiya Purana. Adi Masa considered the sovereignty of the 12 months and saw that he was being slighted. He went to Vaikuntha and related his dilemma to Sri Narayana. Out of compassion, Vaikuntha Pati took Adimas with him and appeared before Sri Krishna in Goloka. After hearing about the distress of Malamasa, the impure month, Sri Krishna's heart melted and he spoke thus. Hey, Ramapati, just as I am celebrated in this world by the name Purushottama, similarly, this Adimas too will be renowned in the world by the name Purushottama. Or in other words, Purusha Uttama, the, the supreme enjoyer who is above all ignorance. Now I am all, now I offer all my qualities to this month, becoming like me. From today onwards, this Adimasa is the monarch of all the other months and is the most worshipable and most adored in this world. All other months are Sakama, that is, they will grant worldly desires. This month, however, is Niskama. Those who worship this month, either without any desires, Akama, or with all types of desires, will have all their karmas burnt. Then they will achieve me. My bhaktas sometimes commit offenses, but in this Purushottama month, they'll be protected. Protected from committing any offense. In this Adhimasa, those greatly foolish persons who neglect to perform auspicious activities such as japa, giving in charity, visiting and bathing at the holy places, and who are envious of the dvijas, the brahmanas, are deemed wicked, unfortunate, and living at the cost of others. Thus, they will not attain a scent of happiness, even in their dreams. Conversely, those who are filled with bhakti will take advantage of this Purusatama month to perform archana to me. After enjoying worldly happiness, such as wealth, sons, and so on, they will eventually attain residence in Gokula. Goloka, I'm sorry. The glories of Purushottama month in the context of Draupadi's history. Many episodes from the Puranas are narrated in the context of the glories of Purushottama month. One such example is Draupadi. In her previous life, she was the daughter of Medha Rishi, even after hearing of the glories of Purushottama month from Durvasa Rishi, she neglected to observe that month. As a result, she attained many sufferings in that life and became the wife of five husbands in her birth as Draupadi. During their exile, the Pandavas followed Sri Krishna's instructions to observe Purushottama Masa Vrata and thus crossed over all their sufferings. As it is said, Hey Muni, 
During the period of their exile, the Pandavas traveled throughout all the holy places, and by the mercy of Sri Krishna, they observed Sri Purushottama Vrata with all rules and regulations. As a result of this, they completed their 14 years of exile without any obstacles, and at the end, attained an unparalleled kingdom. The account of King Jitta Danva, as spoken by Valmiki regarding Purushottama Vrata. Purushottama Masa is glorified in the account of King Dhrita Danva, previous birth. At Badarika Ashrama, Narada heard the procedure of the Vratas from Narayana Rishi, which Valmiki Muni then related to King Dhrita Danya in answer to the king's questions, just as the rules of Ahanika, Gayatri Mantras, four, bear, four Brahmanas are ascertained in Dharma Shastras. Similarly, uh, I'm sorry, uh, just as the rules of Ahanika, Gayatri Mantras, for Brahmanas are ascertained in the Dharma Shastras. Similarly, the obligatory activities for one observing Purusha Tamavrata are also delineated, beginning from the Brahma Mahurta hour. Rules for bathing in the month of Shri Purushottama. Regarding the rules for bathing, bathing during Purushottama month, it is said, Samudha Ganadi Snanam Uttamam Parikrititam Vapikupa Tada Gesum Adya Mamkati Tambudai, and so forth. There are three types of baths as declared by the wise. Bath in the rivers, which meet the ocean, is the topmost. Bath in lakes, ponds, and wells is the second best. And bath in one's home is an ordinary bath. For one who is observing Sri Purusha Tamavrata, after taking bath, he should observe the following. After bathing, one should perform achimana with clean hands. One should then make a paste of gopi chandan clay and wear simple, beautiful, straight, Urdva Pundra Tilaka on his forehead and the marks of the conch, disc, and so on on his body. The exclusive worship of Shishi Radha Krishna is obligatory in Purushottama month. The worship of Shri Krishna is obligatory activity of Purushottama month. Purusha, okay. Valmiki said, Hey, Rita Dharna, Dhanva. Purushottama Shri Krishna is the presiding deity of the Purushottama month. Therefore, being filled with the Bhakti Shraddha, you should worship Purushottama Sri Krishna with 16 types of paraphernalia every day of this month. As it is said, the worship of the divine couple Sri Sri Radha Krishna is indeed obligatory in Purushottama month. Activities that are forbidden in the month of Purushottama. All the rules and regulations regarding Sri Purushottama Rata, which we have presented above, from these shastras should be followed by religiously devoted persons of all the varnas or castes. The Naradiya Purana concludes by saying that in the holy places of Naimishananya, she, Sutta Goswami, spoke to the assembled devotees as follows. Even after taking birth in India, those who are the lowest of mankind remain attached to household life and never hear the glories of Sri Purushottama Vrata, nor do they observe it. Such unfortunate persons undergo the suffering of repeated births and deaths and the distress inflicted by the separation from sons, friends, wife, and other relatives. O best of the Dvijas, in the Purushottama month, one should not uselessly discuss worldly literature or mundane poetry one should not sleep on the bed of others or indulge in discussions of worldly Sanskrit enjoyment. One should not criticize others, eat foodstuffs cooked by others, or perform activities presented for others, prescribed for others. The obligatory activities in the Purushottama month. Giving up miserliness, one should give in charity to the Brahmanas. A person remains miserly even though he has wealth. His miserliness will be the cause of his going to Rurava, one type of hell. Every day, one should feed the Vaishnavas and Brahmanas with the best foodstuffs. The person who is following the vows should take this food to the eighth part of the day 
in, to the eighth part of the day. Indra Dumya. Seta Dum Ama Amna. Yovanasva and Bhagirata attain Samipya, close association of Bhagavan by worshipping the Purusha Tama month. One should perform service to Purusha Tama with all of one's endeavors. Such service to Purusha Tama is superior to all types of sadhana and fulfills all variety of desires. In the previous age, Kondilya Muni repeated, repeatedly chanted the mantra Govardhana Dharam Vande. By chanting this mantra with devotion during Shri Purushottama month, one will attain Shri Purushottama himself. One should, one should devote Purushottama month to constantly meditating upon Nava, Ganadvi, Buja, Murli, Dara, Itambara, Shri Krishna, with Shri Radha. Those who do this with devotion will have all their cherished desires fulfilled. I worship the lifter of Govardhana, Gopala, who has the form of a Gopa. He is the festival of Gokula, Gokula Utsava, the supreme controller of all Ishwara, and he is Govinda, the beloved of the Gopis, Gopika Priyam. The observance were transcendentalists, Svanista, Paranista, and Nirapeksha. There are three types of transcendentalists, Svanista, those who are steadfast in their personal vows, Pranan, Parantinista, those who are steadfast in following the vows set forth by their respective acharyas. Anirpeksha, those who are indifferent to the above two types of set steadfastness. All the activities mentioned above, Purushottama month, are prescribed for Swanista transcendentalists. Paranista bhaktas are eligible to observe Purushottama Vrata according to the rules and instructions of Kartika Vrata, prescribed by their respective acharyas. Nirapeksha bhaktas respect the sacred month by daily honoring Sri Bhagavat Prashad with one pointed attention, following some routine for Shravana and Kirtana of Sri Harinam according to their capacity. Swanista and Paranista bhaktas are generally householders, and Nirapeksha bhaktas are renunciates. The following statement from Vishnu Rahasya, which is the topmost instruction of Sri Hari Bhakti Vilasa, recommends Those whose intelligence has been purified by bhakti are detached from the inclinations for sense enjoyment. The intelligence of such persons is naturally pure, therefore they are jitat, they have conquered their minds. It is by their innate bhakti rather than by upa, upavasa fasting and other such activities that they have purified their minds and are able thus to, uh, to please Sri Krishna at all times. The innate ruchi, inclination, and oblig obligatory activities of ekanta bhakta. Therefore, Sri Sanatana Goswami has concluded this book, Sri Hari Bhakti Vilasa, by presenting the following statements for one-pointed devotees. Ekantika bhaktas, one pointed devotees of Sri Krishna, consider Sri Krishna Smarana and Sri Krishna Kirtana alone to be the most fulfilling and valued activities. Generally, they do not engage in any other angas of bhakti besides these two, which they cultivate with great love and affection. Their eagerness for these angas is so strong that no other activity can captivate their taste. They develop an intense desire to serve the lotus feet of Sri Krishna in a specific mood. Therefore, they render service to the lotus feet of Sri Krishna with moods which are favorable to their own rasa, along with some independence to give up the injunctions which are unfavorable to their cultivation. This alone is their vidi. The Ekantika bhaktas are not bound to follow all the rules and regulations which have been prescribed by the rishis. The moods of the Ekantika Bhakta, inborn natural disposition, generally remain prominent. This is their glory. Adimas is dear to Bhaktas as there is no disturbance from the Karma Kanda in this month. The Bhaktas have observed Sri Purushottama month according to their respective Adhikara. This means, according to the distinctions of the moods of Svanista, 
Paranistita and Ekantika Bhaktas. Bhagavan Prajanata Sri Krishna is the sovereign of this month. Therefore, Adimasa is dear to every Bhakta. This is because increasingly in this month, no disturbance from the karma khanda can come to obstruct the performance of one's bhakti. Sri Purushottama Mahasaki J. So we see that this is the most auspicious month for making spiritual advancement, although for others it's the most inauspicious. So we should make the best of it. Come every day, take part in the classes, have darshan of the deities, worship the deities, chant your rounds, and go back to Godhead by following this Purushottama Mas, Hare Krishna. All glories to Prabhupada, Ki Jai.